Hey yo, beautiful members of the chat. How are we doing today? I believe it's a Thursday. Happy Thursday, everybody. We're almost to the weekend. people how did, how are we doing today welcome everybody welcome 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 now i know what you're thinking leon infinite 12 tier lists what does that mean i'll tell you what it means we're gonna be doing three tier lists not one not two not four three of them uh, but they all have to do with infinite wealth so here's the plan we're gonna be doing a job tier list we're going to be doing a party member tier list, and then we'll be doing a boss tier list. Um, but you know, I feel like I should go back at some point and like re-rank all of like the franchise's bosses or something, and the dynamic intros as well, because it's about time for that. But today we'll focus on, you know, just, just infinite wealth stuff. We're just hanging out. Um, so yeah. Tier lists are a very uh, interesting thing because sometimes you think people like you until you do a tier list. And then the comments are like, oh, fuck you, Leon. How, how could you put Jingu in D tier? Uh, it actually doesn't matter, like, what you think is going to be, like, <laughs> you know, the correct opinion. There is no correct opinion with tier lists. So just put whatever it is that, you know, your heart thinks and just be done with it. <clears throat> Leon, talk about Yakuza 5. Not today. No. Nice try, though. Let's see. Let's play a nice little calm song for this. I think this is a little more fitting. Yo, Slayton. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Shinada Gaming. How you doing, buddy? What factors do you look into while putting bosses in a tier list? We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. Um, but the question is right now, which which one do we start with? Do we start with the bosses or do we start with, you know, the lighter stuff like the jobs or the party members? Because I don't know. <laughs> we could do this multiple ways. Yo, human, my day is going fine. How's your day going? Mm. Flip a coin. I don't know if I have a coin. I think I do, actually. But... Yeah, bosses might take a good bit, depending on how much we talk. Honestly, even the others might take a while, so I'm not sure which one to go with. The weird thing is, though... Hold on, look at this. The job tier list has everybody in every job. Which I feel like that's redundant. Um, that's not what I thought of when I was thinking, okay, let me rank the jobs. Um, I know that some of them like do some jobs better than the others, but I feel like that's a little too in-depth for what I'm trying to do today. So, I'll probably just be ranking the jobs, like, as they are. Mm. Okay, I'm glad to see I'm not the only one who thinks that's a bit overkill. But I do appreciate that they, you know, have the option in case someone's really dedicated. Yo, Abbas. Yo, M26. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. What do we start with? Which tier list? Okay, we're gonna start with the characters. 
I feel like that might be a little easy to digest right now, and then we'll go to jobs, and then we'll go to bosses. How, how about that? Uh, party members, okay, party members. If you could add a new job to Infinite Wealth, what would you add? I think a mascot job where you dress as someone like Onimichi would be cool. Have you guys seen that statement they released uh, recently about jobs that didn't make the cut? One of them is like a basketball player. One of them is like a pest control person. And then I forgot the third. But yeah, that was cool. Oh, I'm going to put these in the description after I'm done with these. But anyway. Let's officially start. Welcome, everybody. This is going to be a tier list stream. Um, if you're watching the VOD, this is a tier list the VOD. Uh, we're going to be doing three tier lists today. And those are party member. And then the jobs, and then the bosses of the game. And I figured this is a fun way to, like, you know, hang out and talk about uh, the game after, you know, a while of the, uh, its release. And I feel like at this point of time as well, a lot of people can actually participate and, you know, talk about the game. So, here we are. Yeah, look. Say hello to the people watching the VOD from the past, you know? Okay. All right. Okay. Let's begin. Ichiban Kasuga. Well, I mean, it's Ichiban. <laughs> um, I feel like a criteria in this list right now is going to be like, you know, how good is the default job is. Um, that's That has to factor into this a lot. And Ichiban has three unique jobs. Hero, Freelancer, and Sujimon. That alone makes him stand above the rest, in a way. But also, his default job is super, super, super well-rounded. But we're going to talk more about that later. He is just the most well-rounded character. Like, you can't go wrong with him. Um, he has a lot of good things in his base job. I don't want to talk about the base job, but I have to. I kind of have to. Um, he's only missing, like, single target attacks in his base job. Or at least enough of them. And he's also missing, like, magic attacks, I think. That's about it. Um, yeah, Freelancer did get a buff. Uh, so, for those who don't know, in Yakuza 7, if you switch to Freelancer, that, you know, bonus, those bonus stats you get from the weapon just disappear. So, you're kind of at a disadvantage. But in this game, they actually fixed that, so that you get extra attack if you switch to free Freelancer to make up for the loss. But again, we'll talk about jobs later. Why am I talking about jobs? I think I have to, but anyway. Um, yeah, Ichiban is like the most well-rounded character out of everybody. Even even more so than Kiryu, even though Kiryu is amazing in his own right. But Ichiban has way more tools um, up his sleeve. And also, Ichiban does have the benefit of you know having the whole personality system. So, that just gives him extra buffs that everybody else doesn't have. Like, you know, the resistance to... Uh, what was it again? Um, status ailments. Um, I'm not sure which ones, though. But, yeah, he gets stuff like that. And then, uh, leveling up the personality also gives him... Uh, like, improvements to some of the uh, buffs he can do. Like, the attack buff, the defense buff, uh, the crit buff, I think. And then also the heal uh, can be better. Um, also, they made him a lot better in this game with the hero class, because remember that revive Kiwami skill in um, Yakuza 7, which used to be like a 50-50 RNG, like not guaranteed, so it's better to use an item? Well, in this game, it's always guaranteed to work, I think. Um, or at least it has a way higher chance. I, I don't remember, actually, if it's chance-based. But, I don't think it is. Um, it makes that move so much more useful. Um, and the fact that, that, you know, they gave him, uh, not only, you know, the attack buff for the party members, but also defense. Def like, this is huge for me for some reason. I love that. I love that they have, like, a defense, uh, buff, an AoE buff, and then the crit one as well. Um, even though I feel like the crit one is super, super niche, you're more likely to use either, either the attack one or the defense one. But I like that option. I always like options. Um, and then, of course, you do have the fact that he can learn three moves from Asakura, the substory MMA guy. And those abilities, oh my god, they actually... I don't know if I would say they carry Ichiban, but, like, he's already good. 
but they help you so much. And those three skills will carry over to all of the jobs. Um, I forget their names, but one of them is a grapple, and it's a super, super good grapple. Yeah, Merciless Melee, thank you. Merciless Melee is actually going to carry you through the game if you're having trouble. Like, if you're underleveled or what have you, it's going to carry the hell out of you. It's so good. And then you get a buff move from Asakura as well. Which, like, it's 50-50 because it's a, a self-only buff. But it's an attack and defense buff at the same time. So maybe you can, you know, put it to some use. But, like, I didn't find myself using the buff skills a lot, honestly. But I do like that they're there. So... That's nice. And then you have the last skill, which is um, not a grapple. It's just a normal attack, but it's like a string of attacks. And the more debuffed the enemy, the more damage it does. And also, I forgot to mention about Merciless Melee. That that grapple has a chance to debuff the enemy, either attack or defense, which is... Do I need to say how good that is? <laughs> it's super, super good. So it combos well with um, Knockout Combo, if you debuff the enemy enough. They will take a lot of damage from knockout combo. Um, wait, what did I say? Yeah, if you deal enough debuffs with Merciless Melee or anything else, do knockout combo and just look at the damage. Um, granted, those skills are pretty expensive at first, but you know, as you go through the game, you won't have trouble, really. Um, so yeah, Ichiban is a unique character. I mean, it, it comes with the territory. He's the protag. Um, and yeah, he has that advantage. So Ichiban... Has pretty much everything you could ever need. Oh yeah, I forgot about um, Hero's Guts or Peerless Resolve, as Seven called it. That comes back, and it's pretty helpful still, so that's nice. Um, yeah, I think I think that's all there is to say about this. I can't think of anything else. Can anybody? Uh, did they get rid of the counter skills? That's a good question, I don't remember. There's a lot of skills, you know, despite a lot of skills being more useful in this game, I there's a lot of them that I didn't use a lot, so I'm not sure. So this is 50% story, 50% gameplay. So far I've gone off of pure gameplay, so I'm not sure. Do we do a story as well? What do you guys think? Because, like, I mean, whether it's story or gameplay, or both, H1 is S tier. So that's not going to change. <clears throat> uh, will you update your old boss tier list? That's great. Oh man, the one with like over 300 entries? Maybe, someday. <laughs> separate list for story. Okay, we can do that. So for, for the time being, let's go for gameplay. And then I'll separate that. And hopefully I'm not going to end up with like a 6-hour stream or 8-hour stream. Anyway. Anyway. Next up, we have Namba. Namba is... Amazing, but I don't know if I would put him in S. He's amazing, though. So, Namba's default job is, like, magic-focused. Um, honestly, I'm tempted to put him in S. Like, his only weakness is that he's squishy. That's it. There's nothing else. Ichiban pretty much has no weakness. Um, if you assuming, you know, you have everything. Um, Namba has amazing magic damage. Also, yeah, Pigeon Storm is incredible. That, that ability is insane. Um, he also has, like, an attack and defense debuff at the same time. If I remember right, in 7, that debuff was AoE. It doesn't matter how many enemies are on the screen. It doesn't matter how far you are. That debuff in 7 was actually broken. You debuff attack and defense of everybody. In this game, that got nerfed. It became, like, an area attack. So you have to be careful, like, uh, or you have to be more... Uh, selective of, you know, where you cast it, but it's still very good. It's still amazing. Um, and then he has a couple of heals, I think. I think a self-heal and then a group heal. The group heal... Did he have a group heal in 7? I think it was only one person, right? So, in a sense, it got buffed, but there is a drawback to it. It increases your drunk meter. So, if that becomes full, then you lose control of your you know, your characters. They act on their own. So, he's good. But when it comes to, like, physical damage, and when it comes to, you know, defense, uh, he could be a little better. But, I mean, you know, he can't have everything. This is not to say that Namba's horrible. I think every single party member is amazing, by the way. Like, if we're talking about how useful they are, every one of them is useful. 
but um, we have to, I guess, rank them depending on how useful they are at the moment. So that's what I'm doing. Um, H1 has everything. Namba is lacking in a, an area or two, but he's still very good. So I think this is a good place for him. Also, Namba is a magic dealer, but he's mostly focused on fire. And I know some abilities in this game give you the ability to, you know, reflect the element of your weapon, which is amazing. I love that addition. So technically, you can make Namba like a multi-element party member, but I don't think you can make him a complete element party member with the default job. With other jobs, sure, yeah, you can. And with the, you know, skill inheritance. Um, but, I mean, yeah. I guess I could argue HMI doesn't have much magic, but... Um, that's not a huge problem with Namba, like, you know, the fact that he's flame-focused. But it is something worth noting. Um, yeah, I was shocked to see Namba as well. I thought that, like, he was not going to come back because he's a likeness character. So for jobs, are we assuming they have... Yeah, we're, we're assuming, like, you know, they're maxed out and they have all the, all the default job skills. Everything. A dodgy D tier. <laughs> Have you not seen the arrest short that I uploaded? Adachi's not even close to the tier. <laughs> okay. Can we do we move on to Adachi already? Or do we have anything left about Namba? By the way, if I forget to mention anything, you can tell me and I'll talk about it. But I think I mentioned everything about Namba. Um his heal is not the best, like I said. It's good. It's good that he has the heal, but it has a drawback. Um Oh yeah, he has a steel move, doesn't he? But I don't know how reliable that is. I feel like it's still kind of crappy, like 7, but I didn't try it that much. Can anyone confirm or deny this? Because um, I'm not sure. It's alright, beggar move. Yeah, I mean, never succeeded stealing anything, okay. <laughs> Sounds about right. That reminds me of Final Fantasy VII OG. I saw a stream of it, and like the streamer never fucking succeeded in stealing anything. It took him a while. Um, okay, Adachi. Adachi is amazing, but holy shit, he is so slow. <laughs> he is so so slow. Now here's the thing: arrest carries this guy so much. You have no idea. But other than Arrest, he's okay. He's okay. Like, I think he's the slowest party member out of everybody. Like, the absolute slowest is Adachi. But he's also the tankiest. But I don't know if he's the highest uh, damage dealing party member. I don't think he is. But he's the tankiest. So, tankiest and slowest. He's that um, kind of party member. He's good. Um, he has a lot of good moves, a lot of good AoE moves, you know, the uh, the charge, uh, what's called breaking top, and he has a grapple, he has a lot of tools. Arrest, if you didn't try it, by the way, Arrest can actually, again, pretty much break the game. So, so, you know how you sometimes have these mini bosses with, like, fancy UI, but not, like, goon UI? You can arrest those guys at full HP. Not all of them, from my experience, but most of them. If you actually abuse this move on your first playthrough, it's gonna be a breeze. Adachi actually will just clear rooms for you easily. Um, so he's good, but he doesn't have a heal, and I don't think he has buffs, but what he can do is debuffs. Um, he has a move that causes fear, AoE, and then he has a move that makes the enemy angry, so they focus on him. The fear one is actually pretty good from what I tried. I don't know about you guys. Have you guys tried it? Did it work often for you? Because it did for me. At least in one fight that I remember. And fear is really good. Like, enemies just skip their turns. Um, but yeah, he doesn't have a heal. Just the fact that he doesn't, you know, have a heal and, like, he's super slow. Like, his agility, honestly, <laughs> is enough to kind of put him in either an A or B. Um... Arrest doesn't give XP. Oh, doesn't it? I'm not sure about that. Thank you for the one month, JLT, by the way. Thank you, thank you. 
By the way, let me reiterate. You might see someone in B or C. That doesn't mean their default job is bad. It just means, you know, as far as preferences or like as far as uh, tools go, some of them have more, some of them have less. So, that's really it. Um, A, nice dragon. A for a rest. <laughs> okay. Jungi. Oh, man. Okay, do we consider the fact that he joins you so late a story thing or a gameplay thing? Okay, listen. Maybe I'm biased, but this guy is amazing. Um, despite, you know, maybe contrary belief. Uh, wait, not contrary belief. Co popular belief. Despite popular belief. Um, I know they got rid of... <laughs> trauma, but... Have you tried Professional Slash? May I introduce you to that move? It's really, really, really good. If you didn't try that move, go and try it, and then, you know, let me know how, what you think of that. Because it's amazing. Um, professional Slash, if you do it from the from behind the enemy, becomes a three attack um, move instead of just a one slash. And it also crits, so it's, it's mega huge damage. Um... Aside from that, he has high agility. High agility is always good, faster turns, and more liable to dodge, or more uh, prone to dodging. Um, he also still has a couple of really good moves, like, uh, what was it called? Divine Shot. Divine Shot has a major radius. And by the way, uh, that one Kiwami move where he uses the pistols was brought back the same way it is. Can we talk about how much more useful that is? In 7, it did absolute trash damage. In this game, it clears rooms. Like, the jump is insane. It's so useful. It's, it's like, crazy. It is. Like, it has a good radius, and it just kills everybody. <laughs> and then, like, if you want to do a single target Kiwami move, he has, you know, the stab move, uh, move which is pretty good and looks really cool. Uh, so there's that. They also got rid of... Okay, maybe he goes to A. They got rid of the uh, Phantom Shift move, I think it was called. Like, where he gets super buffed agility, super, super buffed accuracy. I don't know why they did that. It was pretty nice. And it kind of made them stand out. But uh, it's not here anymore. Um, actually, does he have any kind of buff or debuff move? Like, just, you know, solo buff or debuff move. He doesn't have any anymore, does he? He has, like, poison shot still, which is good. Um, and I think they actually buffed poison shot, so that's, again, good. Um, what else do we have? Didn't realize how shit he was in 7. No, so here's the gimmick with the Kiwami move. That Kiwami move for Jungi, the gun one, is very intriguing, because... I'm pretty sure the description remains the same from 7, which is, the less enemies you have, the more damage it does. But even with one single enemy in 7, that move does not do good damage. Like, something is wrong with it. And then in 8, whether it's one enemy or 20 enemies, it does good damage. So, that's good. They removed his grapple move. Yeah, head trauma. That's not there anymore. But he still does have a grapple, which is important. Because a certain somebody does not have a grapple. Like, everybody has a grapple in their base job. But this guy, for some reason, was like, hey, you know, I'll, I'll, let me use 10 blunt attack skills again. Um, but yeah, I think... Technically, Namba has more utility, so... He should be higher than Jungi. Mm, he became a healer. Like, okay, should we move on to Zhao? <laughs> Even the heal is not really that good. Like, it's not an inst insta heal, it's like a, you know, overtime heal, which maybe it's nice, but like, from my experience, you want instant heals. Overtime heals may be good in, like, I don't know, specific fights where you're kind of in a comfortable position. Because, like, if, you're, if you really need heals, you're not going to use you know, an overtime heal. You're gonna use an insta-heal skill. So... 
Listen, Xiao fan. I love Xiao. I'm one of the biggest Xiao fans, okay? But they absolutely butchered the default job for him. Also, the essence of ladder acrobatics became worse in this game. I'm pretty sure in 7, it used to be AoE, like everybody gets hit by it. This time it's like an area attack, which barely covers much. Um, and I think they added the fact that it may cause insta-kill, but I don't think I ever got it. I don't know, like, he, by the way, did I mention he doesn't have a single grapple? That is horrible. Like, what if it's your turn, which I was in this situation. What if it's your turn, you're playing Zhao, an enemy is defending or blocking, and you can't grapple. Do you just pass the turn or like, I don't know. But yeah, skill inheritance makes that uh, a non-issue, so there's that. But I'm trying to judge these right now based on the default job. Um, like, maxed as well, so there's that. Also, maybe this is a pet peeve for me only, but I am actually so sad they got rid of the... Uh, what was it called? The um, animal essence move. That was one of the coolest Kiwami moves ever in 7. If not the coolest um, essence move. I love that so much. And it's not in this game. <laughs> like, you know, the new one, what is it called? Essence of Walk in a Hard Place. It's nice. It's, it's funny. But that animal Kiwami move was so cool. It's actually a crime that they took that away. If I had to pick between the latter move and that move, the animal one, I would pick the animal, animal one. I would take it. Why is Ichiban's default job in S? He can buff allies multiple ways. He can heal everybody. He can revive. He has AoE attacks. He has a single target attack. And even more than one single target attack if you do the Asakura uh, training. The only thing he's missing is like magic attacks, really. But Ichiban is the most well-rounded character out of everybody. Every single one. More than Kiryu as well. Uh, he can do everything, basically. Oh yeah, I forgot. Zhao is also pretty slow. Like, I think, you know, Adachi comes at the bottom in terms of agility. And I think either Namba or Zhao are after him in second place for the slowest. So that's another thing. To, to uh, consider. Um, like, half of Zhao's moves are either blade attacks or just normal blunt attacks. That's it. Yeah, Ichiban also has the ultimate beam. I forgot about that. Completely forgot. So yeah, there you go. Kiri and Jungi are OP in this game. I agree. Yeah. They're really good. Okay, Tomizawa. A surprising... Okay, he's he's either low S or high A. Tomizawa has almost everything. It's insane. He has magic. He has water magic. He has fire magic. He has electric magic. He has blunt attacks. He has gun attacks. The only thing he's missing is like a blade attack and heals. That's it. But otherwise, Tomizawa, like... he Not only does he have like the highest MP... Uh, like, output, I think. But, like, the moves on this guy are insane. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, he's the better magic user compared to Namba, which is insane. Because, like, Namba is the mage. Or used to be. So he still is, but, like, he got dethroned. Ooh, Cab yeah, Cabby is such a good job. Like, you have two Kiwami moves as well. Um, I think one of them is Fire Element, if I remember right. Yeah, Tomizawa is Namba, but a little more offense-focused. That's a good way to look at it. A jack of all trades. Um, Tomizawa's incredible. I never thought he would be as good as he is, but he is amazing. Um, yeah, the more moves you unlock for him, the better he becomes. I'll say the one problem I have with him, like, that kind of annoyed me, is the tire move. Because, like... The positioning can get weird sometimes, and you'll throw the tire. But, like, either your position changes, or, like, uh, it doesn't connect with, like, the people behind the enemy you're targeting, which is weird. But other than that, Tomizawa is solid. He's amazing. Mm. 
one of his moves makes enemies electric attack. Yeah, yeah. Lowering uh, like a certain element defense is really good. Namba has also the same thing, but for fire. Mm, that's the problem with all the line moves. I don't know. Some of them are fine in my experience, like um, Adachi's charge, the grand liner for Ichiban. A lot of them are okay. But then, you know, you have the tire move. Yeah, the tag team attacks do have uh, messed up positioning. I get that all the time. I still do. Okay, Chitose. Uh, our new female party member addition. And... Okay, surprisingly... She's not... Like, as versatile as you would think. Okay, listen, this is a gameplay only uh, ranking right now. We're gonna talk about Story. Story, yeah, I'm sure I might take her to S. But... She has three blunt attacks, one grapple, no, two grapples, one of them is blade. And then she has heals and debuffs. Yeah, the stat debuffs are really good. The attack debuff helped me a lot. Uh, the heals also helped me a lot. She's a better healer than Namba. But, like, if you want her for, like, uh... Magic, for example, or like AoE attacks. She has one A AoE attack, which is nice, but... Oh, oh, this might be a minor complaint, or like a very specific one. It might not annoy other people. But did anybody feel like her dancing Kiwami move is a little too long? <laughs> or just me? Like, half the time I do it, I'm like, please, just <laughs> get, a get it over with already. Um... And then she has the dog Kiwami move as well, which is... it's it's alright. Yeah, I know you can skip it, but like, you know, rating the animation itself, it's too long. Um, but again, that's that's just a minor thing for me. It, like, it doesn't really super, super bother me. Uh, but yeah, she's alright. I, I don't know what else to say about her. Um... Okay, you know what? You know what? Maybe low A is nice. Because, again, that heal she has is really good. It has a wide radius. Um, but here's the thing. Okay, wait, wait. Here's the thing. Chitose is more of a support character than, you know, an, an attacker. I think that's why I put her in B. Um, unlike everyone up here, where you can attack and you can also possibly debuff enemies. Chitose, like, she does okay, you know, damage, but... More often than not, especially on your first playthrough, you're either going to be using her to heal people or to debuff people. But most of the time, you're going to do the attacking with, you know, Ichiban or Tamizawa. Oh yeah, she is pretty speedy, yeah. She has um, high agility. Yeah, the per perfume debuff is good. Can I... Yeah, l let me comment on that a little bit. That huge perfume. <laughs> I love that so much. Mm, she has a weapon that gives fear. Does she? I know that Tomizawa has one. Um, I think here is good for her. I do like her. I do. You did not just put Adachi in C. Yeah, he's not in C. He's in B. Mm, I don't know how, but she has the most damage in my team. Anyone can have the most damage in your team if you give them the focus uh, to do that. To do that, you can make Namba do the most melee damage if you focus on him. So that, like, I'm not trying to focus too much on damage because of that. Because, like, I don't know, throw Eye of the Dragon on someone, two of them, boosters, and boom, they'll do more damage than everybody else. The charm skill is good. I didn't use it much, but yeah, most of the time that I did use it, it, it worked, so that's good. Mm. Okay, anyway, let's get this over with. Psycho. Uh, she has decent attack skills. But... Mm, this is a tough one, I don't know. Like, I, I don't dislike her default job, but... A lot of the attacks feel samey. 
by the way, let me just say, Jewel Breaker, Jewel Breaker is uh, incredible. Wait, let me play a song. <laughs> Jewel Breaker carries. It's the only move you need from the default job. Yo, Waltcraft, thank you for the 10 months, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Jewel Breaker is actually the new head trauma. Um, if you're still playing through the game, give it a try. Like, she is gonna destroy. <laughs> um, Clobber Wheel, I think, was one of one of the AoE attacks she has. It's pretty good. Powder Puff Press. I think Powder Puff... I can't speak. The Powder Puff Press move was better in 7 than it is in this game. But she does, you know, that's a grapple, and grapples are good. More options are good. Um... Oh yeah, she can also debuff attack, right? Debuff attack, and then... Does she still have the party member, like, attack buff? Or no? Mm -hmm. Blind. Okay, let me ask chat this. Did blind actually help you guys? Ever? I feel like it's such a rare status ailment. I almost never see it. I do appreciate it. And like, you know, it's always nice to have more stuff, but I don't know. I feel like I, I don't see blind enough. <laughs> Rarely. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Uh, Yeah, I mean... Mm, have you completed the final dungeon? I did, yes. Not once, they still hit me. Well, wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, Charm and Paralysis are definitely more reliable. Paralyze. Honestly, even Paralysis is kind of 50-50, because they have a chance to still get their turn. Un but then you have Fear and Stun. Now those are... Uh, the good old reliable. Okay. Yeah, Silence is also good. Sonhi. I'm not biased. But where do we begin with her? Sonhi has gun attacks, blunt attacks, grapples, um, electric attacks. Uh, her Kiwami moves are really good. Oh yeah, wait, 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 wait. The Kiwami moves for Psycho. She has... Did she have one or two? Oh, wait, wait, wait. She does have two. The revive, the kiss revive. And then she has the champagne move. The champagne move is okay, but like... That's all it is. But then you have Son His Kiwami moves. They're both amazing. Visually, and you know, what they do. She has a single target Kiwami move, which has a high chance to crit. And it looks really cool. And then she has an AoE, Electric Attack, which... Is one of the best Kiwami... Best looking Kiwami moves, because... That's Spiderweb. Woohoo! <laughs> God damn. Junkie, but better. Okay, how many times did that AoE whip move bail you guys out of a situation? <laughs> Yo, thank you for the super chat, Mr. Shit His Pants. You, Narukami. Who is that again? Namba? I had a lot of situations where she's the first to go. Okay, she's the first to go. I instantly use the whip move, because, you know, when you start the fight, enemies are all lined up, so you, you want to be as fast as possible. As soon as I use the whip move, they all die. <laughs> yeah, that, like, that's it. <laughs> the fight's over. Divine shot on crack, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. It's insane. It's really, really good. She's missing, like, a heal. And it's debatable on magic, because, you know, she does have electric element attacks. But otherwise, a very solid attacker. And yeah, her agility is also really, really good. Skill cost. Yeah, the skill cost is a bit high. That is true. That is one thing that uh, brings her down. Um... Oh yeah, the grenades. Thank you for bringing those up. Whenever I actually struggled with, uh, uh, you know, the more expensive skills, the grenades actually did a good job. A really good job. 
Um, the sleep grenade is amazing. I made use of that. And yeah. Like, there, there are, you know, options and alternatives, and I like that. Yeah, her gun attacks are decent. That, uh, what was it called? Gatling Bowgun or something? If you catch someone from the back and, like, you do it from there. Oh, the crits are satisfying. Yeah, she has no heals. That is true. But so, uh, Tomizawa doesn't either. Wait, does Junkie have a sleep grenade too? Hmm. Okay, carry you. I'm actually debating. Kiryu, obviously, is like the hardest hitting character, but he's not as well rounded as Ichiban. That's a fact. Um, he has a lot of blunt attacks. He has all of his Kiwami, all of his uh, skills are attacks. Really, there's like no support, anything or heal. Um, but he does have Dragon's Resurgence, and he does have multiple styles. And he does have heat actions. <laughs> yeah, Dragon Resurgence. You know, one problem I have with tier lists, every time I feel like I'm going for a certain criteria, halfway through I feel like the criteria changes subconsciously. And I'm like, wait, should I do it like this or should I not do it like this? Mm-hmm. Beast is pretty strong, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to rank them based on the default jobs. Maxed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Kiryu has a lot to him. Like, the fact that, you know, an attack from far away differs from a close uh, attack. And then the fact that you can upgrade his... Uh, basic attack for all of the styles it's pretty insane and then he also has a parry that parry is so good it can send enemies flying and it can crit as well i don't know like i feel like these two are, inter are interchangeable um it's really it really comes down to a matter of preference i think i do prefer kiryu overall because like each one is fun but kiryu is more fun <laughs> um more polished than anyone else mm. oh yeah I didn't talk about the Kiwami moves they're, do I need to say anything honestly they're really cool um, essence of remembrance is way better than the other one the other one is also really cool I like it but essence of remembrance <laughs> god what a gorgeous move um, I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. So, you know how eventually you can upgrade him to do heat actions? So, get this. This is something that I missed. My friends told me about this. If you're at low HP, um, Kiryu is going to do Essence of 88. That's news to me. I did not know that. I need to go back and do it. And maybe in the upcoming boss fights that I still have to upload, I'll do that. So, that's... Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know either until like a few days ago. <laughs> and I want to see that, so. Poor Zhao. Okay, you know what? He can go here. Let's get rid of the... I think I did that move by accident. Nice. Yeah, low HP. I'm assuming flashing red HP, yeah. I didn't try it yet, but I want to try it. Okay, well, this is um, the gameplay ranking. Like, you know, how enjoyable the gameplay is. I think that's good. Honestly, like, my my bias says, you know, she goes here. But uh, I'm trying to be fair to the others as well. <laughs> so, yeah, I think this looks okay. 
Uh, Chitose is better than Saiko because she has a heal. Um, solid AoE attacks and a lot of decent debuffs and status ailments. Um, yeah. Okay, let's do the story ranking. Can we... So, we talked about gameplay and people wanted story ranking, so here we go. Ichiban. Okay, I love Ichiban, but I don't know if he's S tier in this game. <laughs> um, I don't know. Ichi is a bit too good, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, talking about the story, it's funny because this game feels more of a Kiryu game, even though it's it's not supposed to be, but kind of, you know, is like that. Um, but like, I really do like Ichiban in this game. He had a lot of good moments. He did. Um, but I don't, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't hit the same as Yakuza 7. The story of Yakuza 7, like, Ichiban was incredible in that game. Not perfect still, but still good. Um, he fails a lot here. I actually really like that arc. Okay, so, spoiler alert, who would have thought <laughs> we're doing a Yakuza tier list and we're talking about story, so if you, you know, mute for a bit, or just leave. That one sequence at the, at the safe house, where, you know, Ichiban failed, and then he felt so guilty, and he was, as he was, you know, talking to Kiryu about it. I love that so much, it's so good. Because it felt like it could be leading to a certain kind of arc for Ichiban. But I feel like they didn't do much with that. Part of that is because Kiryu didn't really make much of a fuss about it. Which is an issue a lot of people have with this game. What's his name? Hanawa died? And Kiryu's like, okay, well, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> you know? I would have liked to see a little, mo a, a little bit more with that, but we didn't get that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. By the way, I do understand that, you know, they were in a tough situation. Kiryu had to do what he could to encourage Ichiban to move on and all that. That's... That's understandable. I just feel like the self-deprecation, deprecating Ichiban part could have actually led to something interesting. But it didn't. Um, I don't hate what we got, but it could have been better. Mm. He encouraged him better in the last game. Yeah, I think I can agree with that. If Kiryu, if it was Kiryu in the safe house, he would have felt guilty and went to fight alone like in two. Hmm. Kiryu too casual about Tanoist. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Don't you shrug off the, the death of someone you knew? Mm. Man, there's so many things I like about Kiryu in this game. Actually, why are we talking about him? It's not his turn yet. Namba. Namba was actually amazing in this game. Like, first of all, I didn't expect him to come back. I can't believe I'm putting him above Ichiban, but... I didn't expect him to come back, first of all. Uh, but he came back, and he actually played a bigger role than I thought he would. Um, he was such a good friend to each one in this game. And he was such a good, you know, companion to, to Kiryu as well. Like, the way he tried to encourage Kiryu and all that, I love that. That was really, really good. Um, you can see, like, Ichiban's influence on Namba. Um, wait. No, the other way around. No, no, yes, yes. Sorry, brain fart. You can't see Ichiban's influence on Namba in this game especially more than Seven. Um, so yeah, that, that was really nice, and yeah, I don't know what else there is to say about this. The Drink Link. Okay, if I may, the Drink Link was literally a copy-paste from Seven. 
<laughs> like, it, it's, you know, it's nice, but the plot of his drink link is literally the same. Oh, I knew this girl at work, and like, you know, she's having trouble. Shitty work environment. The same thing. It's just different names. And like, you know, uh, change a few words. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, no, Drink Link aside, you know, the, he's amazing in this story. Adachi. I love Adachi in this game, I think. Um, Actually, wait, no. The security firm stuff makes me feel a bit mixed. I'm not sure. I think one of my friends, was it? One of my friends uh, brought up the fact that it's weird they would hire, like, a thief to do he did I don't know it's can we not talk about this story <laughs> I don't know man um leaving the whole security firm aside um Adachi was a pro throughout the game um he uh much like Namba he you know he didn't blame Ichiban for what happened at the beginning um, he, he stuck around to help. Oh, and both of them gave <laughs> Ichiban advice for Saiko. So there's that. And when Ichiban needed them the most, they showed up in Hawaii. That was such a lovely cutscene. I love that. Um, how does Adachi compare to Namba? He feels like Luster. Maybe it's you feel that way because Namba had way more of a... A bit of an emotional stake, because, like, he really tried to help cure you, uh, you know, do something about his condition. Whereas Adachi, you know, he's with Ichiban. There's not really much of a need to do anything of, th of the sort, except just help him out. Uh, too conveniently? What do you mean? They just swam to Hawaii like <laughs> a certain someone. Funny enough, Adachi's detective skills were not that much of a help in the story. You see much more of Adachi's detective skills in 7, I think. But still, like, I do like Adachi in this game. Yeah, Adachi is jacked. People earlier saying, oh, don't be too harsh on him having low agility. He's, he's getting old. Have you seen the guy's body? He's more jacked than Shinoda, and that's saying something. Okay, I... I don't know. I feel like I'm doing... A crime right now. Like, I feel like someone's gonna skip to this and be like, What the fuck, Leon? Namba above Ichiban? <laughs> okay, Junkie. I love Junkie. I think all of you know he's like my favorite character in all of the franchise. But man, he was done dirty in this game. <laughs> but I'll say this the parts that he did show up in were amazing. Like, you know, the moment he shows up in Hawaii and, like, tracks the, the, the island almost instantly, that was great. Oh, also, also, that that one bit where they picked um, a new outfit, outfit for him, stuff like that, I love. I lo I like, you know, just normal shenanigans, day-to-day -day shenanigans. I love it. Chitase got to pick the outfit after, you know, Ichiban and Adachi failed. <laughs> But we'll get to Chitose in a bit. Yeah, poor Jungi. For those who forgot or don't know, he joins the chapter before the last, so, you know, that, that like, <laughs> why? <laughs> yeah, apparently he was included because... Or they decided to add him late because they knew he was popular. Same thing for Ja, by the way. And it does kind of show. Uh, but yeah, I, I love Jungi, but I do think... <laughs> Here's the thing. He fulfilled his role in this game as best as he could, in my opinion. But compared to the other characters, you know, it's it's not really that much. Which brings us to Zhao. Zhao... You know what's funny? Even though Zhao gets added to your party way earlier than Jungi, like in chapter, what, 9? 10? It feels like he has less of an appearance than Jungi. Or like less of a presence, not appearance. Um, but otherwise, I really do like Zhao. 
Um, I think... I think... I don't know. Maybe they were just trying to go with his... Character trait of just kind of chilling in the background. Yeah. It feels like he's kind of there more than Jungi, surprisingly. Um... Yeah, his drink link is hilarious. Guy leaves a bad review for his restaurant. <laughs> like, it goes on from there. Yeah, like, here's the thing. Zhao was more present than Jungi. Like, you know, the the screen time. But Jungi felt like he had a more substantial role, funnily enough. Like, you know, between going to Hawaii, helping Ichiban find the island and the cult. That was something. And also, a whole segment dedicated to, again, buying clothes for Chungi. That's something Zhao didn't get. <sighs> okay, Tomizawa. I would put Tomizawa in S. But, look, don't get me wrong. Tomizawa is amazing. I love Tomizawa. I think he's like... They, they've done him exceptionally well for a new character. But he doesn't have much going on for him. Like, he starts off strong... Um, in the f first couple of chapters. But then he's mostly just hanging along. Which is not a problem, by the way. It's not a problem. Um, you get his arc mostly in the Drink Link. Which is fine. Uh, that's what they're kind of there for. Um, but yeah, for the most part, he's just hanging along. After, you you know, you befriend him. And force you to... You force him to just hang out with you. <laughs> um... Is it me or does Zhao look like Sorono? No, people memed about Sorono being Zhao's dad. And his interactions with Imai made them more interesting in the... Yeah, yeah, fair enough. I really do like Tomizawa. I think they've done an amazing job again. Bringing him as a new character. Mm. Why is Ichiban so low? Is A tier considered low now? <laughs> oh my god. People are unreasonable. Leon! Why is Adachi below number? That's too low. <laughs> I again I, I I said this before. I do like each one in this game, but I feel like they they didn't do enough. Or like it feels weird. I don't know how to put it, but it Listen. Can anyone speak in my stead? Just, you know, communicate with my brain or something? I don't know. Um Ichiban was better in 7. That's what I'm trying to say. Tomizawa is the most normal person in the game. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Chitose. I really like Chitose more than Tomizawa. Actually. This might be better. Chitose had not just one arc, like two or three arcs. Like you have, you know, technically two new playable characters. I know Sonny is one, but... We saw her in 7, that's what I mean. Chitose has way more going on than Tomizawa does. But the thing about her is that... The stuff around her is way more of a debate than Tomizawa. Tomizawa is like almost un unanimously loved by everybody. Chitose, on the other hand, like, people either, you know, I guess love her or hate her, um, depending, like, but I like her, I do. Um, granted, I do think a couple of scenes could have been handled better, the Tatara reveal, for example, like, people just died here and you're like, oh, hey, I'm a VTuber, <laughs> that, uh, that could have been better. Other than that, though, I, I really like her. Which is a shame, because she's probably not going to show up in Infinite... Uh, no, not Infinite Wealth. Whatever the next game is going to be called. Infinite Freedom or something. Because uh, at the end of this game, they say that she took over the company. And not only that, they don't even show her at the epilogue, hanging out with everybody in the bar. Tomizawa is there. She's not there. So, like, you know... I think that's uh, unfortunately a uh, an omen. 
It's funny because Tamizawa's a likeness character. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um... So yeah, as much as I like Chitusei, I think she's probably not going to show up. By the way, can I just mention, I do love how there is a recurring theme in this game of like, people who betray Ichiban becoming his friends. I actually, I really love that. Because that also does highlight the nature of Ichiban, like, oh, this guy's too good. He'll see the best in the, you know, in, in the worst of people. I think she'll get bored and come back. I hope so. I wouldn't mind. By the way, I feel like I'm saying this a, a bit late, but don't take this uh, this list uh, seriously, because honestly, I myself am feeling pretty unsure about all of this. Um, but yeah. Anyway. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay, where do you guys put Psycho? <laughs> You know, God, it's kind of funny. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I feel like even though... Sa See, much like Zhao. Zhao appeared way before Joongi. But despite that, I feel like Joongi had more of an influence in the story. And same thing goes for Saiko. <laughs> even though she's around way before Zhao. But like... Yeah, God. Do we keep D or delete it? <laughs> mm. So I got such a glow in uh, appearance, but she does kind kind of do nothing. God. It's not just the story, like, it's funny how two of, like, the highlights in, in, uh, highlights in the game, one of them being, you know, the, the three Jimmas fight, that QTE, or, like, yeah, QTE, she's not there. She's only there after everybody's finished, and she just comes in to check on Kiryu out of thin air. Not only that, against Ebina, in the intro, everybody takes a jab at Ebina. And then, Psycho's the only one that doesn't. Instead, she's a pillow for Sonny. <laughs> it's just funny, like, wow. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. God, I feel like there's so much to say, and yet so little to say about Psycho. Um, I do feel like the way they, they wrote her is... It could have been better, a lot better. Um, actually, this makes me think B is too close to Psycho, so you know what? Nah, just kidding. RGG knew a majority of the people use Psycho's idol, so they did her dirty. <laughs> Da, 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 da. I hate that they forced the romance. I understand why people hate the fo the, the forced romance, but you know I like the idea, but I don't think it was executed well. Because like whenever they do, you know, a canon official romance, that takes a lot of balls, believe it or not. Because <sighs> instead of just leaving everybody be, like they always can do that. Um, they're actually trying to make something work. It just didn't work this time. Because, <laughs> um, like, I, I know this is not Persona or anything close to it. Okay, maybe there's some similarities, but... I would take this over, you know, them trying to... The harem substory with Ichiban? Oh my, I hate that shit so much. But the problem is, even though they try to, like, <laughs> you know put some romance with Psycho, that thing still exists in there. Which, I mean, sure, but like... I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. Wait, let me play a new song. But yeah, see, that's what I was trying to say. 
If there was like a cannon, well, it, it is cannon romance technically, but if it was more fleshed out, and then the effort they put into that harem substory is put here instead, you know, I, I think that would be miles, miles, miles better. Ichiban had more chemistry with Chitasei. That is, yeah, that, I would agree with that. Um, which is funny because, you know, in the drink link with Psycho, between Kiri and Psycho, Psycho clearly does, like, still care for Ichiban. Even though she goes to him for like a year. And then every time she brings him up, Kiryu's like, You do. No, wait, what was that again? Something along the lines of, You're worried about you're worried about him, aren't you? Or like, some, you know, something like that. And she's like, Oh, no, I'm just, you know, I'm just checking. And it's like, Girl, come on, just, you know, be honest. Be honest. Um. Psycho is still better than Mafia in terms of canonic romance line. Okay, is she? I know the romance between uh, Mafia and Yagami is non-existent. But, like, that's the point, I think. Because they were past lovers, that's it. And I feel like it's done organically with them. Actually, if, that, if they did that, if they just forced them to go back together, Yagami and Mafia... That would probably end up horribly. <laughs> I don't know. I think the way they're doing it right now is pretty good. Da, 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 da. The only well-executed romance is the whole in the whole Yakuza series was, was Kiryu and Yumi. And it was only for like 10 minutes. Honestly, even that is debatable. If you ask me, at least. Um, the only good romance they did was Kaito and uh, Mikiko. That's it. And this is coming from someone who's not, like, the biggest fan of the Kaito Files. I like it, but, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. We've been talking about Psycho for too long. They did her dirty. Um, she feels absent, even though she gets introduced pretty early, and it's supposed to be, like, one focus of the story. At least a side focus. Um, at minimum and yeah like they don't do much with her they don't do much with her in this game um if anything just i don't know i get that ichiban fucked up and like was a wreck a nervous wreck but like ghosting him for a year is like it, it's a little much um i don't know anyway anyway let's move on to the actual best character in the game <laughs> Nah, uh, I don't know. Okay, I know this is gonna seem biased. I know what you're thinking. Yeah, Leon, fuck you, that's biased. But, I think she's been done wonderfully in this story. I truly do think so. <laughs> okay, listen. Um, they involve her in the story, but not to the point where she gets obnoxious, in my opinion. Um... Most of most of the stuff about her fangirling over Kiryu as well, if you don't like that, that's in the drink links. But in the main story, she's the same old son he really. Um, and I really do like that, you know, her reason for getting involved this time is that uh, Yokohama was a little too peaceful this time around, so she had time, basically. Because um, it's something that I do think is believable. And seeing her... You know, interest in Kiryu uh, from Seven actually, you know, get, get gets uh, developed upon in this game was really nice. I really like that, um, and the fact that she's you know a fan of him despite all the Jingwen stuff. I think she's technically related to them, wasn't she? She was. She's like the child of someone from the Jingwen or something like that. Um, and in spite of that, she she adores Kiryu. Um, and I think there's, like, they do basically talk about why that's the case. Uh, she's not a fan of, basically, not like the old leadership, or like, I'm stumbling over my words. Um, she doesn't like a certain kind of leadership when it comes to, the, to, to those organizations. Um, which you see in her drink link with, like, what was it again? Her uncle or something? Trying to, like, betray her and take over the organization because, like, you know, she's a woman or whatever. 
I love that. The arc, I mean. And like how she handed his ass to him for that. Um, it does play well into how probably the Jing Jingwen themselves were. And, you know, why she's probably a big fan of Kiryu. Even though Kiryu probably didn't think much when he wiped out the Jingwen. But I do love that. I do love the Drink Link. I do love her involvement in the story. You know, she's basically the same as in the same wa wavelength as Namba in this game. She really wanted to help Kiryu uh, do something about his situation. Um, and she gave it her all. She did. Um, so yeah, she's my favorite in this game. <laughs> Rivaled only by... Honestly, okay, maybe not Kiryu. I do love Kiryu, of course. I mean, did you come onto the stream and expect me to say I fucking hate Kiryu? Yeah, guys, I fucking hate Kiryu. What about, how about that? You gonna do something about it? I don't think so. Kiryu has a lot of, a lot of things about him in this game that I love. But also a lot of things that I'm just... Okay, look, th this might seem weird to say. I just don't care what they do with Kiryu at this point. I really don't. Because, like, he's gone way past the point where, you know, anything they do with him at this point will have, like, much value, if, if I had to put it in a way. Because, um, like, they try to end his story, or it felt like that, multiple times to the point where if you get if you see him dying again at least this this is true for me if you see him dying again he'll just be like oh he'll come back in next game like it's it's no big deal it's hard for me to be emotionally invested like it's it's that bad so i just don't really care about what they do with him unless they actually will eventually do something about him which i don't know if they ever will i don't think they will ever ever do that like never probably because, like, he probably makes them a lot of money. So, like, the ending kind of hints on that. The ending hint hints on the opposite. It hints at him being alive and recovering. Because he decided to take that treatment and meet Haruka and regain his name. At least that's how I saw it. So, yeah, like, Kiryu is just the kind of character now where if he gets stabbed... Oh, <laughs> look, Silly Goose got stabbed again. It's okay, he'll be in full strength and, like... 10 minutes. G give him 10 minutes. So... I mentioned a lot about what, how, why I feel indifferent about Kiryu in this game. But let me talk about the things that I do like about him in this game. Um, the fact that he's relying on other people heavily is such a nice change of pace. Like, you know, having these allies with him. That's a different... That's a, an interesting change of perspective. Um... What are we ranking them for? So, first I ranked them based on gameplay, and now I'm doing story. Yeah, that's a good way to put it as well. He's so laid back in this game, it's pretty refreshing. Because, you know, usually he's the most involved character. And he'll lose someone and cry, blah blah blah. Which, technically, he lost someone, but he didn't give a shit in this game. <laughs> but yeah, um... I like Kiri in this game. Um... Seeing him as, like, a Daidoji agent is also kind of interesting. Um, this is such a little thing. I know most people don't care, or they, like, meme about the Daidoji, which... Hey, fair, fair enough. Fair game. The Daidoji are one big meme. But, you know, seeing him have this, like, agent kind of influence... Um, if you remember, when he goes to the bar uh, where Roman is... Doesn't he throw, like, a wad of cash at Roman? Like, here you go. This is my bribe. Now tell us the info we need. Seeing that side of Kiryu... It's pretty nice. Because, like, even though Gaiden is, like, the Daidoji game, I feel like we didn't see enough of that, like, undercover aspect of, of the Daidoji. You know what I mean? If anything, the Ga Gaiden was just like, Oh, you kill you. No, I'm not kill you. Times 30. But in this game, you see that side of him. Like, he actually is undercover. And, uh, you know, he's going around and... Uh, Doing agent stuff, actually. Whereas in Gaiden, he's just... <laughs> he's doing um, Akami's work for her. Yeah, still sucks at lying, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
But yeah, I think this is where I'd put this, the characters in terms of story. Leon, do you think Gaiden's ending was better than Infinite Wealth? It's more emotional. And probably better, yeah. I don't know. Infinite Wealth's ending is way more open-ended than Gaiden. That's that's the thing about it. It's harder to talk about. <laughs> okay, I think we're done with this list. Um, now we can talk about the jobs. Unless anybody has questions. They can do anything now. Exactly. It's like Yakuza 5, actually. The ending of that game... You never knew what was going to come next. Okay. Did we begin? Yamai? What about Yamai? He's not a playable character. The best ending in the whole series is Yakuza 4, in my opinion. Chad. Thumbs up. <laughs> you know, Shadow? Okay, as you can see, there's a shit ton of entries here. But what they did here is they gave an entry to every single character with every single job. So we're not going to do that. We're just going to rank the generic jobs as they are. And the, uh, uh, you know, unique jobs. What, what about the other story characters? <laughs> That's for another day. This is just the party members, as you can see here. We'll get to... Okay, this is not story characters, but we do have a boss tier list as well, so... We have two things left. Do you think Yamai will, re will return? A hundred percent. I think he will be a playable character, if you, if you ask me. They're setting, him, they're setting him up to be one. Okay, let's start with... Freelancer. Uh, Freelancer is good. Uh, it has more base damage in this game and improvement over 7. Uh, did it also have one Kiwami move in 7? I can't remember because it also only has one Kiwami move in this game, which is a shame. I think there should have been two. Um, overall, though, this job is an improvement over 7, so that's nice. Um, a lot of the moves deal <laughs> much more damage now. Ruffian's kick, the drop kick, just, you know, big, big damage. Um, and yeah, it's like classic hand-to-hand. -hand. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. What are those tier ranks? Yeah, I don't know. I found this on the website and I just rolled with it. <laughs> Kume, that's the worst thing ever. Like, you don't want to be branded with that. Okay, hero... Mm, okay, I'm trying to think of the criteria. I guess we rank them on, like, well-roundedness. But, like... If we do that, there's not going to be a job in S, because S means perfect. So you say have blunt attacks, blade attacks, gun attacks, magic attacks, all of the elements, buffs, debuffs, heals. I don't think there's a job that does that. So, we're just gonna put S for the closest thing to, like, the perfect job. Which I think Hero is one of those. Um, Hero has mostly AoE attacks, actually. Um, it has one single target attack. It has a heal. It has a revive. It has different buffs for your teammates. Attack, defense, critical. Um... If you count the moves from a Sakura as well, I don't, like, that's probably shouldn't count here, because it's only hero, and those moves carry over to every job. But, yeah, I, I think, like, hero is super well-rounded. Like, you can't go wrong with this style. Um, it's really nice. Okay, Sujimancer. Okay, um, I've heard people saying this job is bad, and I'm like, what are you guys smoking? Suji Mancer is amazing. You just didn't invest enough time into it. This takes a lot of setup. That's the problem with this job. Um, I feel like people used crappy Sujimon. 
and then went into a fight and they were like, yo, this job sucks ass. But in reality, this job has almost everything. Like, arguably more than Hero. But I don't know if I should if I should put up, uh, the thing above Hero. Like, that's... That might be a little much. Here's the thing. Sujimancer has water attacks. I think two of them. Single target and then AoE. Fire attacks. Same thing. Single AoE. Um, electric attacks. Single AoE. Poison attack. Sleep attack. Um, it has an AoE heal. It has an AoE revive. It has an AoE Kiwami move. With me so far. I think the only thing it's missing is like what? Um, heals? No wait, it does have a heal. It does. It has two kinds of heals. Heal over time and insta heals. So, you know. It's missing gun. Yeah, I mean even hero is missing stuff. But Sujimancer is almost the perfect job. But again, the problem with, with this job is that it needs work and um, investment put into it. If you don't have the ultimate Sujimon, then it probably sucks. Yeah, and also invest magic into, you know, Ichiban with this. And you're gonna destroy. Uh, too much investment for it to be top tier. Mm. You have a point, I think. I don't know. Here's the thing, though. Do we, like take that into account here because like we're trying to you know rank every job at their best not everything else uh, I don't think a lot of people got that far with Sujimancer yeah by the time you get it good the game's over <laughs> mm. what a divisive job Every job needs some kind of investment, that is true. Here's the thing about this job. You know, whereas you try to craft the ultimate weapon for all the jobs, you don't need to focus on the weapon here. You focus on the uh, su uh, Sujimons. So, you know. That's basically the weapon. Which, you know, trying to work for those might take roughly the same time you would take to invest into an, um, an, an ultimate weapon. Oh yeah, you can't inherit Sujimancer moves. That's a shame. I'm assuming it's because, like, you summon, you know, Sujimon. Why do we... Okay, you know what? Let, let's put this down here for now. Let, let's not... Th this job is so complicated. Um, it has, like, more aspects to it than other jobs. So let's just leave it here for now. Okay. Uh, detective... Detective is pretty good. But, like, I don't know if it's A or, like, just higher than Freelancer. Because, again, this job has grapples. It has some debuffs. Arrest. <laughs> and AoE attacks. Um, but you're fucking slow as hell. Slow. The definition of slow. So keep that in mind. Guard breaks. Yeah, guard breaks are grapples. Mm. Breaking top is really good. Reckless charge is good. Like, you can't go wrong with the skills, really. But, again, it doesn't have a heal. Doesn't have magic attacks. Um, doesn't... Does he have buffs? I don't know if he does. Oh, yeah, he has basically Peerless Resolve, which is interesting. I guess it's because he's a tank. I kind of like that. Does speed matter as much in a turn-based game? It matters a lot. You know why? Okay, l let's assume you have Ichiban, Chitose, and Jungi. Okay, and Adachi. These guys are gonna get their turns three times before Adachi gets one turn. It matters a lot. <laughs> um, and not just that, you know, uh, you're chance to dodge as well but you know the turn order matters more anyway uh i think that's good enough for it let's see 
let's move on to Tomizawa. He's one of the earlier party members. So, okay, Cabby. <laughs> Pretty close to a perfect job. Because, like, gun attacks, fire attacks, water attacks, electric attacks. Did I mention gun attacks? Um, he has almost everything. He's just missing a blade attack. That's literally it. And a heal, maybe. But other than that, this is like a perfect job. What is the tier list about? This is the job tier list right now. We did a party member tier list, but now we're doing this. Um, honestly, like, it's arguably more perfect than Hero. Because, like, again, the only thing it's missing is a heal. <laughs> like, sure, blade attacks, but, like, if he has a heal... Oh, man. Oh, man. Mm. Eris. Mm. Okay, you know what? Let's put that in C. It's really good. The heal is really nice. It carries you a lot. Uh, the debuffs are also nice. But she has a low amount of um, offensive skills. Or, or offense skills. Um, she has one, like, move that sends an enemy flying. Two gr grapples, one of them being blade. And, like, an area attack. <laughs> but I think she is better than Adachi overall. Like, Arrest is really good, but, you know... She has more. Actually, maybe A is nice for this. Da, 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 da. Yo, Toto. Okay, who do we have next? Uh... Kiryu Kazuma. Do we need to say much? <laughs> I mean... The only reason I would consider putting him below Tomizawa is because he's not as well-rounded. But he does have enough unique mechanics about him that, you know, makes him stand out. Oh, you don't have magic? Just <laughs> break turn-based. And boom. You don't need magic. So, I don't know. I do think Kiryu is the most fun in general. So, maybe he should be above Tomizawa. The top level is S. And then there's A here. <laughs> so good as regular attacks are just as good as skills. Yep. Uh, Namba. Namba's pretty good. I think he is better than Chitose. Um, he has solid magic. He has solid debuffs. He has AoE heals and a self-heal. Um, actually, no. I think you get more utility out of Chitose, generally speaking. Because, like, Namba is pretty... Uh, homeless guy is more squishy than um, Eris, I think. Namba's, like, maybe the squishiest character in the whole game. Um, and I think he's also slow. So, there's that. But he's... Otherwise, he's solid. Um... I feel like these are too many ranks. Like, n none of them are probably gonna go to... Shit tier. Homeless guy is worse than in 7, in my opinion. No, I see what you mean. That one debuff movie has used to be AoE. Like, just every everybody, map-wide. But now it's area. Um, area-wide. You have to select the area. Mm. There are some bad jobs. Which one do you think is bad? I'm assuming people don't like Linebacker. I feel like even Linebacker has some utility. It's not horrible. Break oh yeah, Breaker. <laughs> See, even Breaker, it's not horrible. But it is mid. Yeah, I'll agree. The thing is... Saying something is the worst job in this game doesn't say much, because they're all viable. Despite what people think. Um, if this was a solo game, then yeah, sure, maybe Breaker would be like bottom-bottom tier and it would be horrible. And 
you know, just nobody wants to use it. But this is a team game. If someone doesn't have something, someone else will. Uh, okay. Um, where, where was I? Hitman. As much as I love Junki, I do think Chitese still has more utility than Junki. Um, B. What does chat think about this one? Top of A. No head trauma. Guys, professional slash exists. It's good. Hmm. Stun sma uh, smash is decent, yeah. I think. Like, you know, in 7, stun smash was really trash because um, if someone was weak to electric but resistant against blunt, they're not gonna get that weakness damage. But that's not the case in 8. So you can still get use out of it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, professional slash is amazing. Um, I'm gonna put him here because he can get more utility out of Namba and Chi to say both. So, um, otherwise though, he's he's great. Let's see, barmaid. Uh... I think she does have more utility than Nadachi. Does she? Because like she can debuff. And she does have a few group attacks and jewel breaker. Um, top B. Her team tag. Oh yeah, thank you for mentioning that. I do like that her um, tag team attack is unique attack. Um, it's the only tag move that can heal the you know the whole party. Every other party um, tag attack is you know an attack. Um, so that's pretty nice about her. I actually like that. Um, but yeah, she, she's okay. Just, you know, nothing too special. Um, where's Zhao? Oh, there he is. Oh, Zhao. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but like, my goodness. <laughs> so they didn't really learn from, you know, what made him not the best to play before. In 7, a lot of his attacks were either blade or blunt. That's it. Like, no variety. Just very straightforward. Um, and simplicity isn't always bad, but in this case, it kind of is. Because he's... Um, it's the only job in the whole game, I think, that doesn't have a grapple. Or one of them. One of the few. Um, but every single job you've seen up here... Actually, wait, no. This doesn't have a grapple until you unlock, you know, the, the Asakura moves. So there's that. But at least, you know, you can unlock the Asakura moves. But you don't have that luxury with um, Zhao. Unless, you know, use the skill inheritance system. But, yeah. Mm. Also, does anyone feel the same as me? Some of his flashiest, best-looking moves from 7 are not in this game. Like, the moves they chose to keep in this game are kind of... 50-50. In particular, that one kick, I forgot the move's name. But that one move where he, like, uses both feet to, like... Insanely fast, like, kick the enemy. Before he does, like, uh, a big kick. I missed that move. The one where he does the funny noise. Oh, yeah! That's gone. <laughs> Dragon Fang Decimator. Yeah, that one. Also, I'm pretty sure he had like a shoulder tackle of some sorts. I thought that was nice. And that's not in this game, so... Hmm? The AoE heal is nice, but again, you usually want inst instant heals more than overtime ones. So, it's whatever. Uh, okay, with Jab side, I think we have just Sonhi left with a default job. Assassin. Assassin is... Okay, I want to put it here, but like, I don't know if I should go that far. 
What does chat think? Should we go that far? Top of A. Because she has a lot of tools, and she's super fun to play. But, you know. I don't know if I should be that biased for this. Hold on, let me play a new song. High cost MP leaves it at A. So wait, if it's just one factor, then all of these jobs suffer from the same thing. Actually, yeah. Here's the thing about Kiryu. You think Sony has high MP cost? Meet Kiryu. His maximum MP is the lowest in the whole game out of all the jobs. That's one thing. And the skills cost a lot. So, like, you can't really rely on his skills, which you don't need to. But, like, if that's something that brings Sonhi down, then it should bring Kiryu down as well. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is true. Please explain why Tommy is S tier. He has gun skills, he has magic attack, he has blunt attack, he has every single element of magic attacks, fire, water, electric. He has a grapple uh, with the water attack. He has almost every kind of attack you want. The only one that's missing is blade. That's it. And the heal. Yeah, I guess he don't rely much on Kiryu's skills, but... Okay, I think this is good for her then. Yeah, I didn't use much of his skills as well. Okay. What do we have next? I think we did all the default jobs, right? Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Wait. Yeah, yeah, I think we're on the right track. Um, okay. Let's just go with Ichiban. So, Aquanaut. Aquanaut is pretty fun. Like, it's, um... I think it has some magic attacks and, like... Uh, blunt attacks that take after the weapons element. And then it also has a couple of heals. Uh, for the whole party. Uh, the Kiwami moves are also pretty nice. A and I don't remember much beyond that. But it's a nice job. Like... For male characters, this is where you get the heal healing skill to, you know, um, inherit. And that's going to help you a lot, uh, fill that missing uh, link. Or missing roll. Yeah, it does have an electric attack. That jellyfish attack is so adorable. Boing, boing, boing. Pew. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. Mmm... Water blunt that can stun the enemy. Oh, I forgot about that move. Okay, hold on. Maybe we should... Does that look good for you guys? I do really like Aquanaut, but... Hmm. Okay, maybe low A. Okay... Action Star. Action Star is pretty good. Um, it has a lot of blunt attacks, though. So the same problem as Breaker. But the attacks are kind of unique. Like, they're different from uh, Breaker, I feel like. Aren't they? S. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. It has one busted buff. Wait, which was it again? I vaguely remember something like that. Yo, Taishi. Oh yeah, the double damage buff. You know, I never used that. But I did see someone pull off like 16,000 damage with that. The Kiwami move that heals. I completely forgot about that. I think I'm actually not going to do a good job ranking the, the generic ones. But we'll see. Hmm. Okay, listen. It's hard to put this in A and just have like the A list just go like that and then everything else is like one or two entries we gotta pick mm. okay i'm such a mess when it comes to like ranking stuff this is good 
but in my experience, like I didn't, I think I didn't make the most of it, so I should probably keep it here. Substitution, Jutsu, and Relentless Combo. Hmm. Are you basing job tiers only based on the skills? No, mostly the skills. Like at maximum level. Okay, Breaker. <laughs> it has a couple of cool skills, but it really doesn't stand out. I get like we could put this in D, but I mean Hold on. D not low enough. <laughs> yeah, Breaker is like this is the only job in the whole game probably where they improved almost nothing on it. Um, which is a shame, because I think out of all the jobs they could have brought back, it shouldn't have been this one. Um, the, what was it called again? The bodyguard job, I think, looked cooler than this. Um, the SWAT job as well. Um, you know, I think those st stood out a little more than this. <laughs> Freelancer had the best rework. Hmm. Okay, what do we have next? Chef. Okay, I saw someone saying this is a bad job earlier. May I introduce... What was it called? Cutler Strike, I think, or something like that? That move? <laughs> is the head trauma of blade attacks. And if you didn't try that, go and try it. It actually carried me um, in the uh, big swell. Cutlery crash. Thank you. Thank you. Peppermill blow got nerfed, did it not? I think it did. Or maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. But, like, it's good. It's pretty good. Chef is just mage with more physical attacks. Hmm. Never tried Chef. It's still good. Ah. <sighs> Chef's actual job that should have. Hmm. It's squishy. Is it? God, I don't know. <laughs> the job is listed as being good for applying statuses, and it does not lie. Okay, that's good. Why does Chef have no healing? Always bothered me. Yeah, that's a missed opportunity. Mm, I think that's good enough. By the way, I want to say this again because I feel like people might join and be like, Yo, what is Zhao doing in C tier? Cringe Leon 7? I said this before. You weren't here for it. So, of course, he jumped to conclusions. None of these jobs are absolutely atrocious and horrible. They all get you by. They all are viable. They all, you know, fulfill a certain role. Okay? But when you compare, you know, the, all of them, obviously there's going to be ones that are better than others. Um, so, just saying that again. Okay. Desperado. I feel like this is a very popular one. And I tried it as well, it's really good. Like, there's multiple elemental attacks, gun attacks, AoE attacks. Um, I feel like I'm forgetting a buff or a debuff move. There's also a healing move, which it's, it's pretty cool. Like, you just take this bottle and drink before you, like, um, hit an enemy with it. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, maybe here. The Kiwami move is also pretty cool, yeah. Oh yeah, Wild Sweep. There's a lot of really cool moves with this one. Poison Cloud. Oh, man. So good. Essence of High Noon, yeah. <laughs> Raise move. Yeah, there's so many, like, so much, so many tools with this job. Um, it carries. Mm. Okay, would you put it higher than um, Eris or no? I don't know. Yes. Higher. 
Okay. Higher. Okay. Alright, people love the Desperado job. And I do as well. Okay. Um... Host. I mean, it's alright. It's okay. <laughs> I don't know. What do you guys think? It Like, it didn't stand out to me at all. I think it has... A Kiwami move that's water-based, and a Kiwami move that's fire-based, and then there's just a lot of magic. Um, does it have a heal? Birthday Bonanza. <laughs> Host is really good. Worse than seven. Oh, really? Huh. Okay, so would you guys say it's worth than, worse than Chef? Because I know Chef does have... I mean, again, none of these are bad. Like, there, there's good moves in all of them. It's just... Hmm. It has a double attack buff. So, just like Action Star, then. It's equal to Chef. Why multiply versions of the same class? I'm assuming, like, if you're hardcore into comparing, then technically some people can do some jobs better than others. It's missing the health drink skill. I see. Okay, well, we can keep it there. Linebacker. Okay, this one I felt like is meh. It has a couple of cool moves. I like the uh, football ricochet move. It's nice. Um, there's one move where, like, you waste a turn to do the move in the next turn, but I feel like it doesn't have enough payoff, if you ask me. Um, it just feels... Meh. It has a move that's just Adachi's breaking top. Linebacker is a better detective, is it? I don't know, man. Detective has a rest. <laughs> There's a move that's like breaking top. That's really good. Spinny grapple move. The one where you take some guy and spin him into the other is pretty good. Right. Hmm. Me when arrest exists. <laughs> Personally, it's better than det detective. I see. Hmm. Okay, hold on. This might be blasphemous. Actually, never mind. I was gonna put the linebacker above host, just because it's new. Would put it in B. Hmm. The thing is, like, again, none of these jobs are horrible. It's just... It really comes down to a matter of preference for the most part. Like, all of these have at least one good skill. All of all of them. Um, okay, personally speaking, I think I do like linebacker more than host. I think it's just host kind of feels generic at this point. Same thing for chef. Because, like, we've already seen that. Um... Okay, what's it called? Pirate Dancer? I like the idea of it, and like the costume is really cool. But surprisingly, even though I got every single job to like 99, I don't remember much of this. Hmm, what do you guys think? I do remember one Kiwami move, where like you put on the mask and like you do this weird ritual thing. Soul Capture. Okay, is it above Action Star? Would you guys say? I don't know. Action Star is also really cool. It's the best support skill, in my opinion. Hmm. It has War Cry, which buffs your attack to the max for like three turns. Really? Hmm. It has a great status ailment heal. Ugh. Wow. I need to study up on the jobs again. <laughs> you know, this should have been a personal preference list, but I feel like it's just me trying to gauge the opinion of the chat now. Honestly, I mean, I just forgot a lot of these. Um, the, mo the ones that I'm most familiar with is the default jobs. Um, Samurai. Okay, would you guys say this is a better bodyguard? Or do you still like Bodyguard more than this? 
I think it's better than Bodyguard. Like, Burning Arrow? <laughs> Come on now. Burning Arrow is really, really good. Like, Burning Arrow alone <laughs> carries. Gets a katana, so I'm happy. I think Aquanaut has more utility, so I'm gonna keep that above. Raining Arrow is, is... Oh yeah, I forgot about Raining Arrow! That's such a good move, because like it doesn't matter where the enemies are. Everybody gets a, an arrow. I used to be an adventurer like you. And then I took an arrow to the knee. Okay, we have the female jobs left. The generic female jobs. Uh, what was this one called? Geodancer? I like this one. Like, just the animation of it is, like, kind of adorable. Um, I don't know. Geodancer is peak. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, look, it's like that emote. The Kiwami heal. Oh, yeah, she does... They do have that. Mm, easy S. Competing for magic attack. Mm. It has weaker attacks at the start, though. I see. I think this is a good place for it. I really like it as a new class. Like, the theme and idea of it. Uh, Maid. Okay, I love the idea for this, but I feel like it's okay. Like, it's not crazy, but it's good. Um, I think it has, like, fire and water attacks. That's about it. But it has AoE attacks. Um, and I think there's one Kiwami move where, like, you send enemies to the basement and you lock them there. <laughs> um, and I forgot the other one. Best magic class for the females, really. Huh. Hmm... Never tried maid. You can remove enemy buffs. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Hmm. Yeah, I forgot about that. So wait, you don't take a stack from the enemies. You completely get rid of it. You know what I mean? Like if they have like three attack buffs, is it all gone with that move? Uh, we're doing job tier list right now. Get rid of it. I see. Wow, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's better than Geodancer then. Works for me every time without fail. Really good against Wong Tu. Okay, goddamn. I should really do a run with the generic jobs because I am not super familiar with them. Which is, again, funny. I have 240 hours in the game and I max every single job for everybody. <laughs> Idol. It's pretty good. Like, okay. Idol is good, but just for the heal. Like, I don't think people stick with this job for anything else. Like, it's just the heal. You get to 30, and you throw this class away. It's good for that. But that's about it, I think. So, like, because of that... God, I don't know. I feel like someone's gonna skip and be like, Yo, what the fuck? Idol in... See? Cringe Leon 7. Okay, so people do agree. It's just the heals. Yeah, it's good, but... Just get idle, switch to something else. Miraculous voice. Okay. Did anybody actually keep idle? Like, they didn't change it? And how do you feel that went for you? That's what I'm curious about. Not, yeah, not enough attacks. That's what I thought too. Like when, when I was doing the grind. <laughs> it, there's like none. <laughs> mm. Right, well. I, I think this is okay. Because yeah, not much attacks. But heal is still huge. So that's pretty important as well. Um, Alright. What do we have next? Night Queen. 
Okay, this is like the Adachi for <laughs> the female characters. It's pretty damn good. Um, you have high HP, you have high attack, and you just have hard-hitting skills. Um, you also have a grapple. Uh, I think it's electric, and it's also really good. And I forgot the Kiwami moves. I think one of them is the one where, like, you touch someone and they get healed. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's solid. It's solid. And I think that you also do have AoE attacks, don't you? Mm. Claws. Oh yeah, the grapple can debuff defense. That is insanely good. Yeah, yeah, true. Night Queen Sun He Triple S. <laughs> oh Kuno okay, Kunoichi is amazing. This job is absolutely one of the best new ones. God. The fa what what's it called again? Substitution Jutsu? Ho <laughs> ho That move alone? can make for some insane plays. Uh, so if you don't know what subst Substitution Jutsu is, you can basically pick anyone else and give your turn to them. Which, you know, again, can factor into insane plays. Especially, like people said earlier, if you, like, do a, um, a move for anyone that doubles their damage on the next turn, then, you know. And also, yes, for Adachi, if you have Detective on him, you can just give him your turn and he will arrest someone else. Like, they're gone. That's it. So, pretty good. Now, that's only one move. And then you have, um... What's it called? The Shadow Clone Jutsu? That is actually busted. Now, granted, it does need some work. Uh, but if you have three agility stacks, you will summon five clones. And they will all, each, do a blade attack. So, five blade attacks... That could basically almost kill anybody. Except maybe bosses. But they like they will be crippled insanely. Um But yeah, Kunoichi is amazing. Uh love the design, love the idea. The job itself is amazing. Um uh, Honestly, like a lot of the new jobs are amazing. I'm so glad that we got what we what we got. Um and I hope that in nine like, all of the new ones come back. Or maybe not all of them. Like, Aquanaut maybe won't, because... Well, if it's set in Hawaii, it probably will come back. But if it's not, then probably not. But yeah, just a lot of jobs in Infinite Wealth. The idea of them is so cool. Um, yo, Steven! I was the person... I know the person who made the tier list. Oh, nice. Yeah, I know. Uh, this is a great tier list. Like, I, I know there's pretty much every single character... But that's good for people who want to do an in-depth uh, tier list, which is, you know, more options are always nice. Uh, but yeah, um, Kunoichi is amazing. Now, what do we have next? The last female job, and I think the last one in general, except Su Suji Mancer. We'll get back to that. Linebacker is pretty solid. Um, it's a DLC job like... Wait, not the linebacker. Penis Ace. Penis Ace is solid, like linebacker. They're both DLC jobs. Um, I remember this having a busted move, but I don't... I can't recall what it was. Does anyone remember? Is it like the... I, I think you nerf an enemy's attack and magic? At the same time? So like, bye-bye damage? <laughs> yeah, the attack and magic debuff. That's... <laughs> bonkers. Agility. Agility debuff, you mean? Yeah, this job is really good. It's way better than linebacker, in my opinion. Um, it has a lot of, like, focus on crit as well, if I remember right, which, that's always good. More damage. Um, yeah, I don't know. But, like, yeah, I think that's all that's going for it, like, damage, basically. Um, well, no, we did talk about the debuffs. Uh, it's hilarious how I'm putting all of the female jobs here, back to back. I just don't know what, where else I could put them. Okay, I do think Konoichi is better than Samurai. Um,
Wait, 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 wait. No, no. Let, let's put... Let's take Joongi below a little bit. Uh, the... This is better. Hmm... I think this looks a little better. Made is S. Man, I really gotta go back and try them again. <laughs> Kanoichi above Eris. Actually, yeah, you're right. Mm. <laughs> okay, I think that's good enough. Now, where do we put Sujiman, sir? <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was really good. Um, I didn't use it until I maxed it out, basically, so maybe that's why. Um, maybe some of you tried it, like, very early on and, like, you were surprised at, like, the low damage. But in my experience, this is really good. It's insane. Like, at the bare minimum, it's high A. I love Suji Master, even if it isn't objectively good. Hmm... Yeah, you can't inherit the skills, so that's, I guess, a downgrade. Or a downside. Uh... C or B, it sucks when you get plus 50 weapons. Yeah. Mm. What about if you have the Kiwami, Sujimon? Does it still suck? I thought it didn't. At least, going off of my memory, which might be faulty. Mm-hmm. Inheriting skills enough. Hmm. Mm. I don't know. Do we stop with this? Because I feel like... I feel like there's something wrong with this list. <laughs> and I know what chat is thinking. Oh, yeah, this. Oh, yeah, that. Oh. But like, seriously, I, I feel like there's something that should happen, but it didn't happen. And I don't know what it is. Breaker not low enough. <laughs> Yo, Zu, how you doing, buddy? I don't know, I think that's good enough. A tier, yeah, I think A tier has a shit ton of entries. But like, here's the thing. A lot of jobs in this game are amazing. They really are. So, like, again, stuff like these being in C is not a bad thing. It's just, you know, compared to the others, they kind of bring more. Or, like, they're more interesting, at least. Um, so, yeah. Assassin is not an S. That's why it looks wrong. I really wanted to put it, <laughs> but, like... Okay, you know what? You know what? I do enjoy this job so much. I do. So, it's S for me. Um. Mm. Okay, honestly, I enjoy this more than... Okay. <laughs> mm. I don't think G-Dance is that good. Hmm... Man, I wish I remember enough about the jobs. That's the thing. A lot of the generic jobs are, I'm kind of fuzzy on. Um, yeah, Night Queen skills go really well with Assassin. Whoa, now, Leon the Saint and enjoyability tier list, but based. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, who said it's not an enjoyability tier list? <laughs> okay. Um, I feel like I'm gonna waste a lot of time if we if I keep staring at this, so I think this is good enough. Uh, we have one more tier list. And it's the bosses. But before this, I gotta drink some water and turn on the AC. So, uh, you do the same. Stay hydrated. I'll be back in, like, two minutes. Two minutes. Maybe less.
Okay. Are you guys ready to cringe? Because guess what? I don't care. <laughs> hey, guys. Okay. Let's play something. What do we play? Oh, this is a good one. You know the one. God. Gaiden had such good soundtrack. Okay. Okay. Um, we're doing the boss tier list for Infinite Wealth. So, first off, we have the Seiryu Clan Officers. That's the end of the first dungeon. Uh, you face a guy wearing a jacket, but nothing underneath. Um, compared to the other fights, I mean, it's cool. It has a quick time event. Yeah, S tier, clearly. <laughs> um, I do want to make it clear. I appreciate the fact that they put a quick time event in this one. I mean, the more, the better, always. Um... Unless, like, they make a quick time event of Ichiban taking a shit on the ground, which, yeah, nobody wants to see that. Unless. Uh, wait, who's next again? Um. I think that's the first TMI fight. It. It's great. It has a dynamic intro. Um. And it has an action sequence, if I remember right. So. Pretty solid. Like, technically, it's. The first real boss fight, um, or at least it feels that way. Um, the cutscene before it is cool. Uh, the AG support is also really nice. I like that mechanic. Um, pretty solid fight. Um, I almost want to take it down to B just because it's like a very early fight, so it doesn't last long. But I think A is good. I think A is good. Next, who do we have? Uh, Roman. The Roman fight was nice. I think I like it more than the officers one. Um, and I'm putting it here because I do care about Roman a little more than, you know, this fight. Roman was such a wasted character, I think. Um, he could have easily been another party member, but he wasn't. Um, or at least, you know, a support character, but he died. Um... So I think that's that's one thing that I'm kind of sad about. Otherwise, though, I, I like the setting of this fight. You know, like... Um, average American bar, I guess, or something. It's a different environment from what we usually see in a Yakuza game. In a way. Um, the quick time event is nice. Yeah, it, it's, a, it's a good fight. Mm. Roman is cool because of his gun. Yeah, Roman's gun. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. I just think characters like Roman and Wong To could have done more. Um, if they needed sacrificial pawns, they could have made another one. Like the... The Thief. Uh, who's next? Dwight, right? Where... Oh, there we go. Okay. This is S tier for me. <laughs> I love this fight so much. Between the dynamic intro... The location of the fight, like, it's gorgeous. The soundtrack... Actually, wait, let's play that. Gorgeous. Gorgeous! Absolute beauty. I love this fight so much. Uh, so again, soundtrack, the location of the fight is beautiful. <laughs> You're fighting Danny Trejo <laughs> with two machetes. Ichiban is fighting him. The quick time event is cool with the bull head. Um, I just love everything about this fight. Um, which is... It's, a, it's kind of a surprise this fight is a little early. But, like, it's not a problem. I just love it. It goes so hard. Um, and I've seen some people that don't like this as much, or, like, they don't like Dwight as much because, like, he pisses himself. But that didn't bother me at all. I mean... Um, 
I just don't see why it's a problem. I guess I do see why it's a problem. People wanted him to be more ruthless and whatnot, but like... Um, apparently there's this thing in this contract, Danny Terho, where the villain has to be either humiliated or killed, so that's why. Um, and yeah, I don't mind it, given that context. It's a problem that he came back after that. I mean, it made sense to me. Um, what do we have after this, actually? Is it the Yamai fight? It's hard to tell which which one is which. Uh, dude, wh which one is the? Oh, this this is the one. Infinite Wealth accepted that clause and says, "Why not both?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought the scene after the Dwight fight was great. I actually like that Tomizawa, you know, had balls of steel in that scene. I didn't see it coming. Um, but here's the thing about that scene as well. I don't think any of his men saw what happened to him in that scene, so... Um, I don't think that hurt his image as much as it did for the player. Mm, okay, the Yamai fight. It's like the most bare-bones fight in the whole game. Uh, you fight Yamai again. There's no gimmick. There's no, you know, intro. There's no quick time event. Actually, there's one gimmick. He targets Kiryu. That's it. But otherwise, it's not really anything special. Honestly, I, w I prefer the Seiryu clan fight. Um, it's okay. It's just, it's a fight of all time. Um, wait, 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 wait. Okay, here we go. And I think after this fight, you fight uh, Wong To. And do I need to say <laughs> any more? The Wong To fight is like, as far as I've seen, almost everybody loves the fight, at the bare minimum. Just the fight. Um, here, let me play the soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, the music is amazing. Uh, the location isn't too special, but I do like the simplicity and the the classiness of it. Uh, the intro, I mean, again, it's like it doesn't have just one person; it has two, Kiryu and and Ichiban. And I love, love, love whenever they have more than one person in, in the dynamic intro, like with Dwight, Chitose and Ichiban here, Kiryu and Wong To in, in this one. God, I don't know which one I like more. <laughs> this is difficult. It is. Um, I think I like this one more, overall. But I really, really do love the Dwight one as well. I do. Um, okay, is this the part where we talk about Wong To once again and how he was wasted? Because we could talk about that. Um, I think Wong To, like Roman, is another person that could have easily become a playable character. Or if, if not a playable character, then they could have done a bit more with him. But like... <laughs> he died too soon, man. He died too soon. Um, maybe this is a hot take, but the fact that he like died too soon is something that I like... ...and hate at the same time. I don't mind it, because it does kind of reflect the, you know... ...the very possible nature of just things going wrong at, you know, the blink of an eye. But at the same time, it's Wong To. He's peak. He joins us right after the fight. They they should have done more with him. Uh, here's my idea. Replace Han with Wong and replace Zhao with Sabashiro in the final game. I would have taken that. Like, if... See, here's the thing. If they didn't bring back Zhao or Han... But in um, exchange, we get at least one party member that's new, like Wong. I would have taken that, gladly. As much as I love Han. 
Um, man, it's such a shame. Like, he's... We've seen how good of a fighter he is. And I feel like even if he's wounded, he could have done something, but he didn't. Feels bad. Hanuman and Kiryu's party. Haven't you seen what he says? I think it's in... What chapter was it again? He's like, I'd be lucky if I go up the stairs and don't run out of breath or something like that. <laughs> yeah, my... Yeah. Yeah. If Wong Cho didn't die, I don't think Yamai would have gotten the development he had. I don't know. Is that true? Because, like, they made the time for Wong Cho's son at the end. If he was there for that, that could have actually, you know... That could have evolved into something a little more. Mm. But yeah, anyway, anyway. What's after this fight? Uh... I don't know if I should go by order at this point. <laughs> wait, oh, this is the club Yamai fight. Really good fight. Oh, wait, the forest. Yeah, the forest. Hold on. Yamai, 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 Yamai. Am I blind? Oh, there we go. It's good. It's good. But it's not as good as the first one. Um, I really like the setting. The forest, you know, in flames and all that. But it should have had more. Just a little more. Um, otherwise, though, I love this fight. I think, again, the, the location and the environment looks really sick. Um, I like the fight. Yeah, and without Tomizawa, it, it was kind of tough. That is true. Mm. Yeah, Zoo. Exactly. Would have been the perfect fight for Wong to support, but I guess he was wounded. Yeah. And unfortunately, Wong to did not have the Kiryu genes where, you know, the next day, the gunshots are gone. So. God. You know, sometimes you have this debate about, oh, Yakuza 0 is perfect. No, it fucking it isn't. How the hell did Kiryu completely erase gunshots the next day? You can't explain that shit to me. Oh god, I, I don't want to go on a Yakuza 0 rant, but I could. I could. The more, like, the more time passes, the more that game, to me, has, like, more glaring issues. Anyway. Anyway. Uh, wh what fight was next? The Yamai Club fight? Uh, yeah, I think S is good for this. There's a lot of really good fights in this game, dude. <laughs> like, there's so many things about this fight that make it as memorable as it is. Just going to Yamai's club and he's <laughs> hanging out with, like, gilfs. Like, one in each hand. Um, and, like, they're trying to be flirty with him and, like, trying to say, eh, don't worry about him. And then the butt spank. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I'll be right back. Really good fight. I loved it. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Let's see. What was next? Wait, what fight is this one? Say to you, clan grunts. The heavy machinery, I think, was it? Millennium Tap. Wait. Oh, 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 oh! Right, right. Okay, okay. So after this was heavy machinery, I guess. Oh wait. Yeah, yeah. Nope. Is it the Yamai fight or the? It doesn't matter. Uh, uh like here, I guess. <laughs> like it's good. I mean, it's not good. Yeah. <laughs> All it does is just bring back the Ishiota uh, PTSD. That's it. But I mean, I do appreciate that it does have an intro at least, so there's that. Okay, Yamai 5, was it? Pretty good fight. But I think I enjoyed the first one more. Wait. Yeah, I enjoyed the first one more, and then the club one more. But this is really good as well. 
I did like it. Um, bring back D tier for heavy machinery. <laughs> the last one is good. Him being support. I don't know if I would count that here, but yeah, that was amazing. I did love the fight where he was uh, support. And that's one thing that leads me to believe he will be playable in the, in the next game. Just watch. Watch. Mm. Yeah, the presentation of 4 is better. And the first one, even. Um. Okay. I guess this one was next. Narasaki was surprisingly... Like, the fight was good. But after the... Like... People say Wong To, like, gives you one of the best fights and vanishes. Na Narasaki is ten times that. Like, the guy has a cool fight, but that's it. <laughs> Literally, that's it. Like, there's n almost nothing with him afterwards. Nothing. Oh, wait, Sawashiro. We'll, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. But yeah, Narasaki is pretty cool. I do like the fight. Um, but yeah, that, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Um, no, Saki had more game than it, game talk than Abina. Yeah, yeah, Separat Sword. Oh yeah, the glitch soundtrack. I forgot about that. So for those who don't know, or for those who didn't see it, the Narasaki fight currently has a glitch where every time you use a Kiwami move, the the track gets reset. It just you can't stop it. Yeah, the minigun scene was pretty cool. Like, there's a lot of stuff in this fight. Um, I think multiple dynamic intros, QTE and all that. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, Sawashiro. Ooh. Man, the Sawashiro fight was so good. Hold on, let me play his track. What a track. What a track, man. The soundtrack alone puts this fight at S tier. Um, the dynamic control is amazing. The QTE is amazing. Um, some of his moves are really cool. Uh, one of them being, like, if, if he's close to death, he's gonna do this move where he pulls out every weapon he has and, like, attacks everybody. <laughs> it's so cool. Yeah, the stance changes as well. Really cool stuff. Um, the only thing that can bring this fight down, or just any fight in general, is is um, if you're overleveled. You're probably not going to enjoy it as much, but still, th there is fun to be had here. Um, really good fight. Really good fight. Um, also, I'd like to think, I have this headcanon, that this fight is intentionally easy, because remember what happens after the fight. <laughs> Hear you. Get me out of here. <laughs> what do you think of them killing Retconning? Yeah, I, I knew that was coming. Um, as soon as I saw one certain scene, I think. I don't think I don't think I like that they made it so that Sawashiro didn't kill him. Uh, Hoshino. I don't know. Actually, wait, wait, did Sawashiro kill anybody? Ever? Do they talk about that? Because, like, I remember talking to someone about Sawashiro being playable. I think it was a friend of mine. And he was like, no, but Sawashiro killed. But now that someone's re reminding me of that... No, he didn't. If they retconned that, he might become playable. Because <laughs> apparently people theorize that, you know, if someone killed 
a character, then they don't become playable. So... Yeah, he popped one guy's eye out, but he didn't kill him. Saijima almost chopped, well not chopped, stomped the arm of Kugihara off, but he's still playable. Kind of. I don't know. I, I just feel like if they want someone to be playable, he, they will be. Anyway. So I should have aside. I think... This one is next. Okay, this one <laughs> is peak. Absolute peak. Um, the setting of the fight is beautiful. The snow, the village, um, the music. And the unexpected shift in the middle of the fight, where, like, if you want to finish off a character, you go into Dragon Resurgence, and, like, the whole arena turns around, and, like, it's just a bunch of memories around. And, and like, the soundtrack changes as well, depending on the character, to their Yakuza 4 theme. Beautiful. Beautiful. It's so well done. Um, and the scene before and after as well. Perfection. Perfection. If I may talk about this story a little bit, I love that, you know, they all, like the three Jimas, they all call out uh, Kiryu's bullshit. They're like, what do you know about, you know, taking responsibility, blah, blah, blah. I love that so much. It's it's about fucking time they did that, because Kiryu got away with pushing responsibilities onto people for far too long. And the fact that they acknowledge that is one of my favorite things about the story of this game. So that was great. I love that. Um, okay. What was next? Was it the second white fight? I think it is. The second white fight is pretty cool. I like it. Um, it has one action sequence where, like, he takes a grenade launcher and shoots it at you. <laughs> Say hello to Diablo or, El Diablo or something. I like that sequence. Um... It's, it's okay, I like it, but it's definitely his weakest fight, which is not really saying much because all of his fights are cool in my opinion. Which brings us to... Was it this one, or was it the shark first? I actually don't remember, was it the shark first? Or... Jog my memory chat. Shark is later. Okay. Okay, yeah, the shark fight. <laughs> oh. Even though there's no dynamic intro, there is a QTE. But what they do with this fight is so, so, so good. Um, the mechanic of, like, pushing enemies around to, like, um, have the shark eat them, or, like, you know, that can also happen to you. It added this unpredictable element to the fight, and it made it so fun. So, so, so fun. Um... And in that sense, it's a pretty unique fight compared to every other fight. Um, you know, you have environmental objects in probably several fights, but they don't come into play as much as they do in this fight. It's <laughs> really, really fun. I loved it. Um, and then, of course, you have the scene after this, which is pretty funny. Rest himself in goddamn dinner bells, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I enjoyed this fight a lot. My only criticism is that the QT is a bit awkward. Yeah, there were a couple, a couple of QTEs in the game that looked like they lacked impact. I do kind of get it. Okay, Tyrant of the Tides. Uh, it's good. It's okay. But, you know... You fought the shark once already, so, like, it doesn't have as much impact. But it's cool. It's okay. Mm, actually. I wish the environment played a bigger part in the boss fights. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Blessed Leviathan. Okay, this one is better than the shark for me. I love this fight. And I know what you're thinking. Fringe Leon 7. This is unrealistic and unbased and not based and uh, fringe and not cool. Shut the fuck up. This is cool. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. If you don't like this fight, 
That was like. I like this fight. Okay, that's all there is to it. I do. Um, I did not see this coming at all. And the fact that it has more to it than you would think. Like, you know, between the squid eating you and then you, <laughs> you take control inside the squid to get out. And then, like, both tentacles being separate um, entities. And then there's also the squid. This fight did not need to do that much. But it did do that. And it's impressive, honestly. Like, just the fact that they did so much with it is impressive. I love this fight. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, the squid can eat you. If it does that, then, you know, you go inside, you see, like, a whole scene where you slide in. And then you have to, like, basically damage the insides, and then it'll spit you out. Um, if you didn't see that, check out my video where I compiled all of the QTEs and action sequences. Skip to, like, near the end, and you'll see them. Hmm... Yeah, I was also uh, too overpowered for a lot of the fights. Right. Uh, Bryce Fairchild. I really enjoyed this fight. I, I know, like... I don't think this track is copyrighted. I hope not. I mean, if it is, whatever. It's too late. Uh, Bryce... I know people see him as, like, a Jingu too, or, like, Munakata too. But I think, I think he's more than that, if you ask me. <laughs> like, I, he's an old man, like, yeah, but... Just the idea that you're fighting a crazy, bloodthirsty cult is something that makes this fight um, incredible for me. I love that idea. Um, the soundtrack is amazing. Three dynamic intros, one action sequence when, like, Bryce uh, drops the guns and picks up a sword desperately. Um... Yeah, I like the fight. I, I do. I kind of want to put this in S, honestly. Yeah, I think this, could, this is good for it. Imagine if Bryce was jacked like a duchy. I mean, he kind of looks like he is. <laughs> Judging by his chest. I don't know, I just liked it. Because, like, the feeling of, like, having... A lot of people, or like a lot of enemies around you, usually isn't anything special, but I like that in this fight. It felt like, you know, uh, fitting for a cult. Are there spoilers? We're talking about story bosses, yes. <laughs> Be careful. Actually, press the X button now. Um, I became a Bryce stan account on Twitter because I knew he was peak. <laughs> Nice. Go, king or queen. Yeah, I, I do like... Uh, again, I, I love this fight a lot. I love the Palicano and this whole like element to them just killing each other uh, when they become useless. Um, but yeah. Okay, Seiryu clan grunts. Now, this is not a boss fight, but just <laughs> visually, this is, this is like... Man... Honestly, probably better than everything. Because, like, for the first time in the whole franchise, or what feels like the first time, um, the Tojo Legends... Well, maybe not the first time. We did have that in Gaiden. But before Gaiden. Um, you have, like, the Tojo Legends reunite. Reuniting and, like, taking down whatever, you know, uh, stands in their way. But, like, it has such a... Me melancholic feeling feeling to it in this game that just makes it different from the one we had in Gaiden. It's so cool. It's 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 emotional. It's beautiful. <laughs> How does the four compare to the four fight in Gaiden? Right, yeah, I was just talking about that. Like they stand on their own grounds. Um this one has more emotional Im impact to it. Because, you know, the soundtrack and uh, given what happens in this fight over here, the previous one. Uh, seeing them actually, you know, come back to help cure you and all that. That was beautiful. Um, though, you know, th that's not, of course, to say that Gaiden's instance was bad. It was also amazing. But it was a different kind of amazing. So, yeah. 
Gu Gaiden's, uh, the four fight was more like... How do I put it? It's just like a raw kind of exciting. Different from this one. Um... And yeah, of course, the action sequence after this was... Be like, that's what makes this fight. If that was not there, I don't think this fight would have nearly as much impact. But the fact that that was there... My goodness. <laughs> Last game with the Nagoshi. Barely acknowledged Saijima and Majima. Two games with the full Yokoyama leadership. Full scenes with Kiryu and the three Jimas. You know, I do wonder how true that is. Like, I do wonder how much changed. Um, Because... Usually what you see is that, oh, Nagoshi left, things became worse. With the story, I mean. But like, I don't know. Okay, Ebina. Mm. I love the intro. The best thing about the intro, hands down, like, forget anything else. The best thing about the intro is the fact that, um... Everybody's in it. Everybody. For once. Everybody's in it. So, Kiryu, Zhao, Namba, Sonhi, and Saiko. That alone gets a lot of points for me. Um, and to be fair, the fight has, what, um, two quick time events? Yeah, one in the middle, and one when you're done. And they both go so hard. I feel like this fight is similar to Aizawa, where, you know, you, you could say what you say about the story, but the fight is really cool. Um, I think this is where I would put it. But yeah, I think I said all I have to say. Also, the soundtrack for this guy is amazing. Um, again, despite him being kind of mid. <laughs> Maybe now was an A villain, but yeah, his fight was great. And yeah, I think that's all I have to say about all of this. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe this is a little too high, but I think I'm purely going off of like the emotional value you get from this. And the really cool scene. Like, it has a lot of impact, you know? <laughs> it's amazing. And yeah, that is my infinite wealth boss tier list, if you can count that a, a boss. If you don't, then well, just, just take that out. And that's it, you have a list. Um, boss themes? Nah, we're done for the day. I think this is a good point to stop. But yeah, um, do you guys have any questions? The gas fight. I think it should count, yeah, but it's not here. That fight was pretty cool, in my opinion. Opinions change with time. It's always fun to go back and compare. If only more people understood that. <laughs> Sadly, it's the internet. Mm, which gas? Uh, the fight in Yamai's club with like the gas mask uh, barracudas. I like that fight, actually. Because, like... It's one of the more difficult fights, relatively. Um, and in a game like Infinite Wealth, I think you do need as many of those fights as possible. Because the game is easy. <laughs> this is the most replayable game in the series. Yeah, I need to go back and play it at some point myself. Either on stream or off stream. Um, I love Infinite Wealth. I think, you know, say what you say about the story, but the gameplay is amazing. Um, and as I've said like 20 times, because I know someone might be thinking, Oh, Leon, what about the DLC? Yeah, the DLC sucks. Uh, but what can we do now? Uh, apparently, people have more of an issue with localization. Oh, they changed two words. That's so bad. That's worse than the DLC. People care more about that than they do with the DLC. So <laughs> it's a sad world we live in, unfortunately. Like, if you ask me, I can get, I can get past that. Like the... Localization stuff over, you know, uh, stuff like uh, paid New Game Plus. It's just like, who cares, man? <laughs> I've only seen one 
proper, like, take on the whole thing, which is an article by uh, Dojima's Dragon Girl, if you guys know her. Um, I did mention her in my iceberg. She was... Uh, I took some info about R uh, RGG Online from her. She made, uh, like, a, a blog post about her take on it. Um, but every other take that I've seen about that topic is like, Oh, they don't say, like, uh, uh, racist. They say, like... Uh, I don't know, something. Just a replacement word, and they get angry over that. It's like, who cares? <laughs> if you're too stupid to understand that they mean something, then you're unfortunately stupid. That's all there is to it. Localization tier list. Yeah, we need that. Mm. Yeah, they changed two words. Censorship. I feel like people really do over, like, over or blow things out of proportion with that. Because one of the takes that I've seen is like, oh, it's it's not the writing of the game that you're seeing. It's like the influence of the localizer's opinions and all that. Which, like, yeah, to an extent it is, but you're still getting a super accurate translation most of the time. Like, 99% of the time. You might see, like, one or two uh, translations that are like, wait, what the hell is that? But that's, that's all the, it is. One or two lines. That's it. The worst one was a guy saying there were no black people in any other game before this one. <laughs> I guess that person didn't play Yakuza 3. <laughs> God, it's so funny because every time you get a person like that who is obviously stupid and doesn't understand the whole topic, it's someone who played like one or two games. And it's just a shame. Yeah, I forgot about Gary. <laughs> Gary was in Yakuza 1. <laughs> and 2. Ay, ay, ay. The only problem is that the wealth is not infinite. True, I can't argue with that. They stop you at 10 million. Now, ain't that some shit. Yeah, best not to think about that whole localization stuff. I don't think we should give it the attention that, you know, we could give it. It's dumb. It should die down. Um, and I just do wish that people care more about the new Game Plus thing. Because I remember commenting about that recently in some, one of my videos. And there was yet another person that was like, oh, I don't care about the new Game Plus. Which is, hey, like, <laughs> each to their own. But, like, but, like, but like, you know, kind of cringe, you know? <laughs> what can he do? Like, I kept saying this as well on Twitter. It's not so much about New Game Plus as much as it is, you know, just taking a feature that was consistently in the games and now making it paid. Oh, what's next? Premium Adventure? You gotta pay for that. Oh, that's that's gonna be fun. <sighs> Why is it called Infinite Wealth? I don't know. <laughs> Someone Oh, I hate that fucking take. Oh, if you're broke, just say so. Yeah, have fun being charged $100 for a game that you still have to pay $50 more for to get, like, the uh, complete package. That's gonna be awesome. Have fun <laughs> wasting money. God. Yeah, some people are poor, shocker. And those people just don't care. So they must they must have great company in real life. <laughs> RGG shouldn't get away with those features being paywall. I think so too. But apparently it's easier to get away with that than it is um getting away with, like, a changed word or two in English, so... Again, it's a sad world we live in, but yeah. Um, I don't want to keep you guys any longer. Uh, we're done with the stream. I might timestamp these uh, at some point, so that uh, VOD watchers can just skip to what they want. And yeah, uh, thank you guys for joining me on this little, nice uh, short stream. Um, it's been fun ranking things, even if I had a pro like trouble ranking stuff. 
but it was fun. So thank you guys for joining. Hope you had fun. I had fun. And I'll see you probably with more Ace Attorney soon. Um, until then, you guys take care. Stay safe and stay healthy. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.